Hey, my name's MC Tally. I am a drum and bass MC, vocalist, producer, uh, music mentor, teacher, author, and manager. Um, I was born and raised in Taranaki. I studied at university in Wellington, and then I went to drama school in Christchurch. And while I was in Christchurch, I discovered rave music, and in particular, drum and bass. Um, I'd always had a love of lyrics and rapping and rhyming. And when I first saw an MC over drum and bass music, it sort of married the two things that I really loved, and I thought, mm, that's the job for me. So I was first introduced to the UK drum and bass scene um, through tapes called One in the Jungle, which used to get sent over from the UK to Christchurch. And being a drum and bass lover and a raver, I was always really eager to hear what was on the tapes because it was usually the latest in whatever was hot right now in terms of drum and bass. So um, tunes from like Groove Rider and uh, Ronnie Size and Goldie and LTJ Bookham. And that was really where I first got introduced to the label Full Cycle and to Ronnie Size and the Represent Collective. And that really kind of spurred my interest in terms of me wanting to be an MC and a recording artist. It kind of made me think okay there's labels out there that sign artists and there were people like uh, Bulletproof and Concord Dawn who were just starting to make ins into record labels in the UK as well so I sort of thought well if they can do it as producers surely I can do it as a vocalist and as an MC um, so it was my ambition to go to the UK um, and go to these drum and bass nights I don't know knock on Ronnie Size's door tap him on the shoulder something like that but um, serendipitously, I actually met him at an after party uh, Represent had played in Melbourne at the uh, Palace, I think it's called, in St Kilda. And I was backstage, I got introduced to Ronnie and I told him who I was and what I did. He asked me to MC for him, uh, so I did, there and then on the spot. And from there it kind of um, spurred this sort of relationship between me and the Full Cycle Collective because they were really impressed with what they saw um, and they invited me over to the UK to work with them, which I did three months later. Um, and then another three months after that, I was signed to their record label and touring the world with them. This was at the Palais, Monday, January the 29th, 2001. Date all changed. Da, da, da. <laughs> The reason I decided to re-release Lyric on My Lip was because of the fans. Like over the years I've had so many people say to me, when are we going to be able to get it digitally? You know, I've got the CD or I had the record, but it sold out, like the record sold out. And once it sold out, that was it, you couldn't get it. So um, Full Cycle disbanded and then, you know, that was it as well in terms of the digital side of things. So um, it was last year that I thought, hmm, I'm pretty sure it's been 15 years and I'm pretty sure in my contract that I now own the rights to my masters, to my, to my record, and that means I can do what I want with it. So I thought, now feels like the right time to re-release it. I can put it out under my own imprint. Um, and while I was looking for the paperwork actually around it uh, to make sure that it was actually 15 years and that I was right in thinking what I thought, I found all these old VHS tapes and they were all recordings that I'd taken from my time on tour during the early 2000s and I started watching some of them in my old handy cam and thinking this is gold, you know, like this is kind of stuff that people would like to see and it actually kind of uh, reignited within me um, the passion and the, the enthusiasm and that sort of confidence of youth that I had back then in making that album. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to re-release the album, celebrate 15 years, and I'm going to make a documentary around it because actually when I do look back and I reflect, the story is worth telling. It's not that I think that I'm particularly, you know, amazing that I should tell my story, but it's more that the way that things happened for me, going from a dairy farm in New Zealand to being on the cover of DJ Magazine and breaking the UK Top 40, like that shit's quite amazing. And I figured pretty inspirational. You know, I moved back to New Zealand after 10 years in the UK and I effectively had to start my career from the ground up again. People didn't really know who I was here when I came back. So I really had to work hard again to get known within the industry and a lot of people thought that I was very new on the scene. You know, they're like, oh, I just heard this new MC and it's kind of like, actually, I've been around for 20 years. You just don't know the story. So yeah, it really felt relevant to tell the story. And then the fact that it was COVID this year, people were in lockdown, 
um, there were a lot of people who contributed to the documentary that I felt probably uh, had more time on their hands than maybe they would have if we hadn't had COVID-19. So in that respect, even though the documentary is quite raw and very, you know, people filming on their phones and, and very sort of like zeitgeist of the moment, it does reflect um, what we've all been going through this year and um, the kind of circumstances that we've had to make things work under. Yeah.